Hello, this is Joe with Joe's Astrophoto.com. Today we're going to be processing the Dolphin Head Nebula. First, I just wanted to say thanks to everyone who um, left comments and likes and shared my Dolphin Head Nebula on the ASI Facebook page. Um, I almost didn't post it there, and then I thought, well, it's a pre it's pretty cool. I want to post it and share it, and uh, maybe I'd get a shot at the ASI Week or something. Um, and I just didn't realize how much people were going to enjoy it and, and like it. So I'm really glad that I did post it up there and I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who checked it out. Um, I, I, I'm honored and humbled that so many people liked my photo and I got a lot of requests on social media um, to see how I processed it. I also had a few people say that uh, because I put Photoshop in there that I somehow changed it or did something weird with it. And I, I don't know, I guess it depends on how you look at it. Um, maybe um, in somebody's eyes, my processing um, is doing something weird with it or something that's like against the rules. I don't know. Um, you'll just have to judge for yourself. Watch the video and, and see what you think and let me know. But again, thank you so much um, for the great response. I, I am truly humbled. So let's get started. You'll notice that um, my masters are fits instead of exifs because I've been using AstroPixel processor as the new way that I pre-process my images. And I just wanted to throw that out there in, in case you were wondering. So we're going to stretch these real quick. And then we'll um, crop them. And I'm going to put a pretty generous crop on this for now. Um, I'm actually going to crop it down more after. All right, we can close that. And then what I like to do is use the linear fit. And um, I normally do it on the hydrogen, but because there's actually more data on the oxygen, I'm going to um, use it as my reference. And then we just apply that to the hydrogen. And what it's supposed to do is make the background um, equal in uh, mostly just light intensity. Um, we still need to do a dynamic background extraction. So we'll close this. And now we'll open up uh, Pixel Math. And I'm going to change these real quick. Um, the identifiers. I'm going to make this one O. And I'll make this one H. Real simple. So I can come in here and I can just put in H. And I'm going to ask it to create a new image and an RGB color. And let's stretch this. And there's the beginning. Somebody had asked, um, or I saw a comment on Facebook that said they'd like to see what the image looked like before. I process it, it and you know outside of the mono um, files I guess this is the closest um, it's not really stretched yet so I mean actually that would be what he's asking for but I think this is more representative of what he was talking about um, I'm not sure if that's helpful or not to him but there you go <laughs> so let's move on and actually um, make this look pretty. 
So I'm going to open up the uh, dynamic background extractor and I'm going to set this to 150. Um, I did change the tolerance to 2 and the shadow re relaxation to 6 over the default. I don't even remember what the defaults are anymore. Um, I saw this on um, the Visible Dark YouTube channel and I've been using these settings for a long time since I saw that. I also use, um, so I don't forget later, um, this multi-scale linear transform that I'll be using pretty soon. I use these settings from the Visible Dark channel as well. Just wanted to make sure that uh, I give credit to places where I find things. So, there you go. Um, so what I'll do is I'll generate this and then I'm just gonna come in here and either move or delete these points around the nebula. Won't take but a minute because there's not much real area here. Um, probably just move that out of the way, that little bit of the nebula, just so it doesn't do something funky. And then what I'm going to do is just um, save this process for later because I'm going to have to rerun this again on subtractive mode and also rerun it again um, on my oxygen because I'm going to use that as a luminance um, filter. So let's execute this. Sorry about the ding when I close this. Um, I'll try and get rid of it in editing. And it's already looking better. And I'm going to run it one more time on subtraction. That's done. We're going to save this process for later, and I'm going to run um, a color calibration and a background neutralization on it. And I'm just going to take the defaults straight away from Pix and Sight. Stretch it. And there is. There's um, everything calibrated, and now we're going to run that um, multi-scale linear transform on here. And um, I'm going to change this to RGB, and I'm going to turn on the preview mask. I need to turn the screen stretch off um, in order for this to work. And then I'm going to move this amplification until gets to the point where I like it um, I think right there so basically what this does is that everything that's white is going to have the multi-scale linear transform applied to it and um, everything with color is pretty much not and the way that you can change that around is with the amplification and the smoothness sliders here in the linear mask but now once you've got it you can um, close this and we can turn the preview mask off and re-screen stretch so we could see it working and then pretty much just apply it this takes for a minute or so um, depending on how fast your computer is Excuse my birds in the background. Um, they're wanting to know where their peanut is. <laughs> I usually bribe them with a peanut before I get started recording. And now they know when I'm recording and if they don't get their peanut, then yeah, they make sure and let me know. And the audience too. So that looks pretty good. It, it cleaned it up pretty nicely. Um, really like these settings. Okay, so I'm going to close that and now we're going to go ahead and stretch this so that um, we're nonlinear. So I'm going to open up the real time preview. We lock this in. 
and then just start stretching. A quick reset and stretch again. And probably one more time. Um, on the third or fourth time you reset and do this, um, you really need to watch to make sure that you're not clipping too many of the shadows. Um, the first couple times it's easy to just bring this right up to the curve, but now you'll notice that I'm actually clipping when I bring it right up to the curve. But it's more of a what you what you see or what I see. In, in the picture, um, I, I don't like the clip. I don't want to clip any of my data, but sometimes uh, I don't go just by numbers. It, it's got a, it, there's an art to it as well as the science. So, so I want to bring the highlights up too much right there. It looks good to me. Okay, so. We now have our stretched image. Now that we have our stretched image, what I normally would do is invert this image and then I would run um, an SCNR on it and I will remove all the green. And what this does is it gets rid of the magenta um, colors, especially the magenta colored stars in a normal SHO palette. Um, however, let's see what it looks like now. If I didn't do that, um, the first time I processed this and it's because it really changed the star quite a bit, the star color. And, and maybe that's a good thing. I don't know, but I was under the impression, or I'm under the impression that this was in the pre-stages of supernova and I think, and I'm not positive because I'm not an astrophysicist, but most um, stars that are getting ready to supernova are, are usually um, red at some point. And it was a lot redder before. But some of these other stars do look better. And you'll notice that some of the magenta from here is gone as well. And I don't know, I just didn't like the look of it. So I'm going to undo this so that um, I can show you a good representation of what I actually processed, um, the picture that I showed. And now you can see that the, the reddish glow is back around the star. Um, anyway, I just wanted to show that, share that with you. So the next thing I'm going to do is a star net. And um, if you haven't seen my video, I have a video on this. So if you're interested in the Starnet, um, I'll link the video up here and um, you can watch that later. It's pretty informative um, if you're not used to using Starnet. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and run this and this is going to take a few minutes. So I'll be right back. Okay, we're done with the Starnet. Um, it took about three minutes to run, so not too bad. Um, and this is our image without any stars. I'm gonna undo this real quick and make a clone of this. And I'm going to just uh, minimize it. We're gonna use it later to reintroduce the stars back into our image. Um, now let me redo the Starnet. Close the star net. And the next thing I'm going to do is run um, a color mask script. I'm going to change my blur to three. And the first thing I'm going to run is the cyan. I've kind of incorporated this technique. Um, from Astrobloke, Glenn. Uh, I'm gonna leave a link up here uh, to the video where he first um, showed this. 
I guessing he got it from someone else as well, but I only saw him ever do it, so that's why I'm leaving the link to. Um, so you want to check that out. It, it, he did a really good job of explaining it. Now I'm going to run the script again on um, some other colors. I'm going to do a magenta. Normally what I do is the the green and the cyan, the magenta and the yellow uh, for an SHO, but being that this is an HOO, it's, it's going to be a little different. Um, so I'm not going to run the green because I really don't have much green because it's not that SHO and um, I think I'll do the yellow next. If I remember right, there wasn't a whole lot of yellow. And I'm not sure it's really worth worth keeping that, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. So now what I do is that I just use this as a mask and um, the magenta is just stuff that I kind of want to remove from the image. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on as a mask and I'm going to hide the mask. We'll open up curves and we're going to um, open up the real time preview. And you'll notice that uh, I'll just grab the the LRGB and as we pull it down well, if I pull it up you'll notice the, the red the magenta and a lot of that I think is, is really noise so I'm gonna pull that down to there and apply it and, and that's all let me reset this and close the real-time preview and now we're going to um, roll that up I don't need it anymore and we're going to apply the cyan mask. And then we'll turn the real time preview back on. And this is where the majority of our data is. And what I want to do is just put a little bit more blue in here. So I think that um, this is more of like the artist prerogative type of thing where I just think that the Dolphin Head Nebula looks a little better, a little bit bluer than the um, turquoise color that it was. Or sea green, aqua. I'm going to remove a little bit of the green. And then I'm going to add a little bit of red to get the hydrogen to pop out a little bit. You could see the hydrogen data, it, it was very faint, and uh, in order to see it good, you have to, to really pump up the red, um, or take a lot more hydrogen alpha exposures. Looks pretty good right there, um, might be a little too much, but I'm going to roll with it. I hope the image comes out looking similar to <laughs> what I posted. Um, there, there's not really a science to this, it's, it's mostly just uh, art. So I'm gonna pump up the brightness just a little on the top and bring it down on the bottom to just give it a little bit of contrast. And then we're gonna take a look at the saturation and just saturate the colors a little bit give them a little bit more pop um, well, I don't know if I want to do that again let's see no it looks good okay That's it with that. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this a little bit. 
And this is um, pretty much um, liking what I'm seeing so far. So now we're going to work on, I'm gonna roll this up. We're gonna work on our um, luminance layer, which is the oxygen filter. And uh, I'm gonna have to go back and rerun this. forget you can't drag the little triangle up there you have to actually hit the execute button I'm gonna run that one more time on subtraction sorry about all the dinging and we're gonna do a quick um, multi-scale linear transform let's try and clean up some of that background noise I'm going to turn the preview mask on. We're going to leave this at luminance this time. And turn the real time viewer on. And then we're going to adjust our amplification a little. Too much. Maybe right there. So we'll go ahead and close the real time preview. Preview mask, and we're gonna apply that. This is really just to clean up the background noise, but I didn't want too much of it because I want to clean up some of the noise that's in here too. I also don't want to lose too much detail. Now, another thing that um, I do on a lot of SHO uh, data is to also run a deconvolution, but I did not do it on this one, and um, so I'm not gonna. I'm not going to run that in this video either, but I just wanted to let you know that that's something you could do at that point before you go ahead and stretch this. So I'm not going to run that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, stretch this now. So I'm going to lock this one in and turn on the real time preview and stretch this. three times but that actually looks pretty good I'm not sure I need to run this again mm. Why not? I was I lost a little bit of data in that one but I think it's gonna be just fine okay now our image is stretched we can um, run the star net on it be back in about three minutes again. All right, that finished up. We can close our star net and then we can um, apply that. So let's open up our RGB combination and we're just going to uncheck these. We're going to drag this into our luminance. And, oh, before we apply this, um, this is still a little grainy. So what I like to do um, is to run a convolution and usually turn this up to about four. And I'll apply this on here and um, you'll see it, it, it looks real blurry now, but um, the grain's gone. All of our detail is in here um, so it's going to overlay this but with less of that grainy look or at least I hope so so I'm going to turn on the chrominance noise reduction and just leave everything else default and, and drag that on here and this takes a second or two um, while it works its magic
And then I'm gonna skip over this and I'll be right back when it's done. Okay, I finished up and that had a lot of detail. Um, let's bring this to the center of the screen and do a before and after. So if we undo this and redo, you can definitely see the detail it added. Um, so now what I'm going to do, just to um, tune it up even a little bit more, is I'm going to do a range mask, a uh, range selection, but make a mask with it. So we'll turn the real time preview on, and then we'll just adjust these sliders until Looks good. I want to get some of the. I want some of the black to stay here. I'll make that mask. We'll apply it. Oops. Ha! Huh, made a clone. We'll apply it this time. Okay. <laughs> Let's roll this up out of the way. And we can close that now. And then we'll open up the curves, reset it. I think I'm just gonna brighten it up just a little bit. So I guess some. Did I not open up the real time preview? Let me uh, hope that's too much. Just a little bit. And we're gonna. Give it a little bit more contrast. Not a whole lot. Um, apply that. Let's reset it again. I think that's really good. Um, I just want to darken the background a little bit. So we're going to invert the mask and then we're just going to dark, bring that lightness down just a little. Just to help make this pop a little bit more. Um, some of the colors in the background were really nice. I mean, it's still the gases right, that are hanging around here. Um, and you can still see some of them, but you get more of a pop from from this with this down just a little bit. Um, again, it's, it's just, you know, uh, all in artist prerogative, I suppose. Um, So I'm going to save this and where's our image that we made a clone of right here. So we're going to save these two images as TIFFs and then we're going to go over to Photoshop. So be right back. Okay, we're in Photoshop. We have our two TIFFs. Um, they're 16 bit by the way. I saved them as 16 bit. Um, and we're going to uh, create a new layer. And then we're going to um, hit Control A to select everything and copy. And we're going to paste it in here. And then we're going to change the normal to luminosity to get our stars back. And then we're going to just drop this the star opacity down a little bit. Maybe to about 68% so that we see more um, more of the nebula yeah, it looks pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and um, merge this down and then save it and then I'm gonna go into um, Lightroom Classic to do the final crops um, you could do it in here. I just, it's just easier for me to do it in Lightroom Classic, but um, if you don't want to go in there, what you can do is um, duplicate the layer here so that if you do anything you don't like, you could just delete the layer after and go into um, filter and camera raw filter. It's basically the same thing, um, almost exactly the same thing. 
uh, you might have a little bit more control in the actual Photoshop program. Um, I just like the way that Lightroom Classic lets me crop this the way I want to and, and whatnot. And um, so in here, once you're in here, we can add a little more contrast if we want or just play with it, check it out. Um, that's too much, of course. We could add a little bit of clarity. That's that looks nice. It's um. I mean the background looks pretty good the way it is. So I don't really want to mess with the shadows, the highlights, the whites, which you would normally do with a regular photo. Um, I think we've pretty much done all of that already. Um, the only other thing that we could do which I think I did the last time is add a little bit more um, add a little bit more red it's, and I don't remember to be honest with you how I did it yeah it was just the purple so I brought the purple up on the hue closer to the red side than the blue side and I think that was about it pretty sure that's all I did Say okay, and now um, we can crop it. And I don't know why I'm doing this in here because it just said that I wanted to do it in Lightroom Classic, and now I'm doing it here, which is, I guess, that's just fine. Um, see, and that's why I like to do it in Lightroom Classic because I already have it a little bit, it's just much easier for me to work in so um, you guys could watch me fumble around in here doing it actually that looks pretty good so let's go ahead and cut it and then um, the image and image rotation here we go the dolphin head nebula I hope you enjoyed that if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe as it really does help. And we'll see you in the next video.